And amen. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. We're going to be talking about uh, uh, in Exodus 14, we're talking about the crossing of the Red Sea. Are you with me? Amen. Now the Lord spoke to Moses saying, remember he had come in verse 3 and said, I'm going to, he appeared to Moses in the fire and said, go tell my people, you know, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they might come and worship me. And then he wouldn't do it, so he brought him out by a mighty hand. And, and, and Pharaoh finally, because his the last plague was the death of his son. And, and, and uh, remember, they seen the blood. Remember the blood? We talked about it. Yeah. They seen the blood and, uh, and it passed over Israel, but it killed Pharaoh's son. And because of that, Pharaoh, after, I don't know, I think it was nine plagues or so. And, and, and Pharaoh finally let the Israelites leave. He let them go. He said, man, get your family, get your kids and get out of here. Just leave my country. And they did. So they journeyed. And that's kind of like you could say that that's kind of, you know, uh, 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 the devil getting fed up with you and finally saying, you know what? He let him go. He let, he let, you know, God, God rebuked you, punished you, you know, beat him up. And he finally let you go. Man. But he's not, you know what I mean? He, he's dumb. He, he, you know what I mean? God always gives him the hokey doke. And so you're going to see in this story how God, how, how you can say Pharaoh is a form of the devil, how the devil finally got beat up enough that he finally let you go. But after he let you go, he realized what he'd done. See, the devil, I say, should have killed me yeah. when he had a chance. Yeah. He should have killed you when he had a chance. Yeah. But he didn't do it. Right. You with me? He made a mistake. Yeah. He let you go. He let you slip out of his hands. Yeah. But... He, He's real, he realizes what he's done. Yep. And you're going to see it here in the, in the, as we read in, 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 in Exodus 14. The people had left Egypt. They wandered in the wilderness. And Moses, with his great navigational skills, takes them to a place that you would have thought, what a knucklehead. He led them into a boxed area where they were cat, uh, where when Pharaoh was coming, there's nowhere to run and there's nowhere to hide. And it just kind of reminds me of our situations that we're in tonight, where it seems like there is no way for you to get out of it. Yep. That's exactly where God wants you to be. Yep. You with me? Amen. So now the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel. He says that they turn and camp before Pi Hahathon. He said between Megdal and the sea opposite Baal Zeph Zephor Zephon. He said, You shall camp before before it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel. They are, be they are bewildered by the land. What does yours say there? Confused. They're confused by the land, is that what it says? They are trapped trapped. In the wilderness. They're trapped in the wilderness. Amen? Listen, Pharaoh, see the devil thinks he has you. Yep. He doesn't realize you got saved. Yep. Amen. He doesn't realize that you've accepted the Lord and he really don't understand that. Yep. So he thinks he has you. Sometimes you trip up, mess up, and he thinks he has you, but God knows what he's doing. Amen. They're Amen. bewildered. What did you say, Alex, again? Or Mary? Confused. Confused, trapped in the, wil in, the, uh, in the wilderness? He said the wilderness has closed them in. In other words, there's nowhere to run to. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. Remember that song? Yes. Nowhere for you to go but to God, right? Yeah. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will, he will pursue them. Amen? Talking about the power of God. He said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart that they will pursue them. And I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all the army, or all, over all his army, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And you say, Amen. Amen. He said, I'm going to get on through this whole thing. I'm going to, I'm going to make a clown out of Pharaoh, is what he said. Amen. And they're going, to, they're going to honor and they're going to respect me one way or another. Yep. Somebody said it yesterday. I don't know who it was. Maybe for prayer or something. Somebody said, 
every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. And I thought, yeah, you know, willingly or unwillingly, every knee, every atheist, every de devil worshiper, every, every uh, you know, I mean, these, these, these uh, 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 what do you call them? The guys from Israel, the, the I mean, from uh, mu the Muslims. They're going to bow to Jesus Christ. Right. Every knee. And including, I don't know if you've ever seen the show, I think it's Maghetto. The show, at the end, there's a Satan. He rises up and fight Israel. And at the end of that thing, God makes that big old dragon, that big old demon devil. He makes him bow. And that devil bows down with horns and ugly. Jesus is Lord, he said. And that was the most powerful part of that service. Amen. But one way or another... God's going to get the victory and the glory because he said, I want them to know that I am the Lord. Amen. He's a powerful God. He said, and they did so. He said in verse 5, now it was told the king of Egypt that the, that the people had fled and that and uh, the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? In other words, why do we let them go? That we, ha that we have let Israel go from serving us. How many know the devil's mad because you used to serve him? Yeah. Some of you were heavy duty. Yeah. You thought you were serving the drug dealer. You thought you were serving the, the, you know, the, the, that person or, yeah. or, or, or whatever it was. But you were serving the devil. Yeah. And the devil said, why in the world did I let him go? Yeah. What was I thinking? You with me? You remember that story where Paul turned and told that woman, get out of her in Jesus' name. And that, that woman who brought her, her master's great gain from soothsaying or tarot card reading or whatever it was she was doing. And, 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 and they threw him in jail because the, she took their master's, uh, you know what I mean, finances away by casting that devil out of that woman. You with me? And, uh, you know, because after they were like, man, what did this guy do? Man, he took all our finances. That's the way we made it. We got rich. Yeah. You with me? That devil realizes now, man, why in the world did I let him go? Yeah. You with me? He had no choice, but, but still, you know what I mean? He, he, they said that to themselves. Why did we let these people go? They were serving us. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And in verse number six, he said, so... So he made ready his chariots and told the people, or told his people with, took his people with him. And he took 600, chari 600 choice chariots. You with me? 600 choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt with, with uh, captains over every one of them. And the Lord's, and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, they went out with, uh, they went out with boldness. Amen. They went out with boldness. And verse number nine says, "So the Egyptians pursued them." All, all the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh. He said his horsemen and his army and, uh, and, and overtook them, them camping by the, sea, by the sea besides Pahithron or whatever that is, <laughs> before, the, before Baal Zephon. What's that dude, Matt, Matt, what's his name, something, Zephron? What's his oh, name, uh, Zach Zephron? Zach, Zach, Zach Ephron. Zach Ephron, that's him. <laughs> that's where he lives. Oh. Verse number 10, it said, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes. Now watch this. See, it was all good in the neighborhood when you're going to church and doing good and you're getting blessed and God even gave you a little bit of money and, you know, put your little relationship back together and, you know, and the kids are doing better now and all that. It's all good in the neighborhood till you see the devil coming. We got people in our church recently in prayer, everything's in the devil coming. They quit. Yeah. Oh, no. It's too hard. 
Serving the Lord is heavy duty, man. Yeah, man. You with me? Amen. They looked and they seen the children of Israel lifted their eyes and they beheld and they and behold the Egyptians marched after them. Could you imagine that? Six what do you say, six hundred chariots? Yeah. Choice chariot. I mean, they're heavy duty. They were in the Cadillacs. 600 of them. And, 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 and all Pharaoh's army, all the military, you look and they're just... And you look as far as the mountains, as far as the deserts, every square inch is filled with soldiers coming after you. And you thought, oh dear God, I thought we got out of that. They were dancing, they were excited until they seen the devil. You with me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that devil's heavy duty. Yeah. That's right. And, and you know what happened? They got it. They were afraid. Amen? Yeah. They were afraid. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes and they beheld, and behold, the Egyptians marched out after them. So they were very afraid. Amen? Yeah. And the children of Israel cried out, to the Lord. I mean, you know, they didn't cry out to the Lord for in faith. Right. You can't walk in faith and fear at the same time. They were afraid. Some of us are afraid. We still think the devil has a hold on our physical bodies. We still think the devil is going to go ahead and do with our children what he said he's going to do. The devil is a liar. Yeah. The curse has been broken. Somebody say amen. amen. Yeah. The blood amen. broke that curse over your family right. and over your life. Yeah. You don't have to worry about what's going to happen or what, what happened in the past and, and this and that. You don't have to worry anymore. The blood of Jesus broke that curse off of you. Amen. You with me? You don't have to. You know, sometimes we even pray, but we pray in fear, yeah. not in faith. Yeah. And can I tell you this? You're not gonna get it. You're not gonna get your prayers answered. You're wasting your time. You with me? And when you pray, you have to pray in faith. These people immediately. You know what I mean? It was all good marching out, lifting Moses on their shoulder. Everybody loves the pastors when everything's going right in your life. The moment everything goes wrong and you're broke and all this stuff, you start pointing fingers. Come on now. Oh, maybe not this church. Verse 11 says, Then they said to Moses, Look, check it out. There it is. They're going to their pastor. He says, Because there was no graves in Egypt, he says, Have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Come on. They were just praising Moses a minute ago. All of a sudden, who do they look? They pick on the pastor. You with me? They say, Hey, what you do? Bring us out here to die? What pastor? You said, Pastor, that God would do this. You said that God would do that. He didn't do it. They were, they were, they were ready to kill Moses. Amen? You brought us out because there were no graves in, in Egypt, so we can come out here and die in the wilderness? He said, why? They said, why have you so dealt with us to bring us, out, to bring us up out, in, out of Egypt? In verse 12, is this not the is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying now this is their words right here this is what they told Moses when he came saying God's going to bring you out God wants to save you God's going to heal you he's going to deliver you from the stronghold of the enemy and they said this is what they said back then let us alone leave us alone pastor you with me Sometimes you get comfortable in, in, in the places you were. Yep. How many of you were comfortable in that bar or maybe that crack house or, or maybe in that house of sin that you yep. lived in with people and men and women every day, different, nasty, gross. I mean, you were comfortable. It was norm. It was the norm. Leave us alone, man. We're all right. How many of you have ever drug talked to? And we've seen them in our ministry. Drug addicts come in here. And, and, and you know what I mean? You try and get them saved. They don't want nothing to do with God. They're like, well, I'm all right. You know, they're skinny. It's 50 pounds. Picking their skin. There's holes all over their body. And this and that. And they're telling you, leave me alone. I'm all right. And they don't realize it. They're so familiar with sin and with all that junk. that They don't realize it's how messed up they really are. They're broke. They're, they're, they're broken, but they're so comfortable with it, they don't care. You with me? They're willing to live like that. 
They said, let us leave us alone. Let us alone that we may serve the devil. Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. They were comfortable in their bondage. But if you go back to Moses and, and, and or Exodus chapter 3, it said that the children of Israel cried out to the Lord for deliverance. And God heard the cries of his people. Remember they were beating them. You ever seen the Moses yeah. story? Yeah. They were beating them with whips. They were, they were abusing them. They were killing them. And they were forced to do labor all day long in that hot sun. Yeah. And over there is heavy duty. There's 130 degree days. Are you with me? Yeah. They were, they were, they were beat. They were tormented. They were all this, but they don't remember all. See, some of us don't remember what the devil had. Yeah. We would, yeah. we think back to the cash in our pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The the wad that we had in our pocket. The ride we used to have. Yeah. The home we had. I talked to somebody the other day. Was a, a, a heroin addict. They were telling me outside. They said, "Man, Pastor, you should have seen the house I had." was sick. Man, we had a security system. Man, I owned it. I bought it cash. I drove this ride. I drove that ride. Now they're living right there in the street. That's what sin will do to you. Sin will take you farther than you want to go, cost you more than you're willing to pay, and keep you longer than you're willing to stay. The devil is a liar. You with me? They, they ate porridge. They ate, they, ate, they ate once a day. They ate junk. They ate trash. They ate what was left over. They ate nothing. I mean, it, was, it wasn't even, but, but the devil's tower, remember back when you had a salad? How many you ever see nacho libre? Yeah. When they're making that nasty soup. Because the man had had diarrhea since Easter's. <laughs> and he says, man, you know what I wish I had? I wish I had a salad. <laughs> And you remember the salad nacho made them a big old, like a, what do you call them? them, them Caesar club, salad. A, a club salad, or what do they call them? Uh, salad. Cobb salad, or you know what I mean? Big old Calon salad. I'm going to be asking for a salad. I'd be mean, like, give me a pizza. Do drop it. Think that bad boy can salad. But they're thinking, man, remember we had a salad back there in Egypt? And I'm serious. They were saying that the lentils. That's good. We have more than enough. And all this time, the devil is a liar. He's making you think back. You had that baby doll. Yeah, but everybody else from your gang had her too. Damn. And your boyfriend that was with, that had, you remember on, on Duke of Earl? I do have that chick's name on her thing, Wera or whatever. My well, chick is back, man. He's got Gata back there or, or whatever the other girl's name was. You ever seen that poster at, at Walmart? There's a poster of a homeboy. He's getting a tattoo, and he's got big old arms, and he's got yeah, he's, he's putting his baby doll's name, but above it's like ten names crossed out. <laughs> and you think, oh, he loves me. You're just a notch in that bow, baby. That's all. <laughs> the devil is alive. <laughs> Come on now. How, how good it was back then. Uh, Oh, and when I had a man, he was faithful. And this, yeah, right, you were so drunk, you didn't even know. <laughs> Let us alone, they said, that we may serve the devil, that we may serve these Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the devil or serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Isn't that heavy duty, that statement right there? Huh? After all, have you ever seen people that have served the Lord and they become so bitter in their heart? They say, man, I just should have stood doing what I was doing. I was better off then. You with me? Now I got to pay my bills. Now I got to go to jail and, and, and make up for my fine. Now I got to, I got to, come on now, be responsible. I told my wife today, I said, I, I really feel like God's given me a message for, for not only for the church, but for young people in general that says just because you can have sex and produce babies doesn't mean that you're a responsible parent. You with me? Because you can, amen, reproduce doesn't mean you are responsible. 
Come on now. There's, there, that's deep right there. That's heavy duty right there. Just because you can do the dirty deed doesn't mean you're going to be a good mama or a good daddy and provide for that child and love that child, appreciate that child, take care of that child the way they deserve to be just because you can do it, baby. Oh, shoot. I was the greatest. Oh, come on now. All night long. All the other Give me that. You love your children. Show me that all night long. All night long. And then get up and go to work out there. Provide for your kids and come home and then cook dinner. And again, it starts and diapers and caca and throw up on your new clothes, <laughs> on your, your, your guest jeans and your, come on, I'm probably back in the 80s, but <laughs> just because you can reproduce doesn't mean you're responsible. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Verse 13 said, and Moses said to the people, remember they're crying, they're all, why'd you bring us here? You, kind of, you should have just left us alone. And the pastor stood up and said, hey, you know what? He says, do not be afraid. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. In other words, Amen. be quiet and just stand and trust God. Amen. Stand still doesn't mean that you just stand there. Because some of you could do that in worship. <laughs> I walked in and seen a few people just standing. And I'm like, man, they're standing. But instead of just standing, that's not what he meant. Stand in faith in God. Stand, be strong. Remember what God said to you. Stand and you'll see the salvation of God. You with me? Remember in Ephesians 6, he said, and having done all to stand. Stand there for. Amen. Have you done all to stand? Right. You with me? We're not talking about, you know, standing just like I said. I'm still here at church. I'm, that's, that doesn't mean you're standing. Right. You with me? Right. Having done everything to just stay standing. Like Rocky, when Rocky said, man, he's knocking Rocky out. He said, but if I'm still standing in that 15th round. You with me? He said, man, I won my battle. He said, I know, man, in myself, I can't probably win this champ. He said, I'm just a bum. I'm just a second-hand boxer. He says, but I have an opportunity, and I got a hard head. Some of you have hard heads. You got to be hard heads when the devil hits you hard. You're dumb enough to get back up again. Say, come on, devil. You hit like my mama. Is that all you got? My mama and my grandma hit harder than that. Huh? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. How many know we're talking about the power of God? He said, which he will, which he will accomplish for you today. Stand still. Listen, that is so powerful right there. Stand still and see the salvation of, of the Lord which he will accomplish today. Amen. 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 He didn't say, well, you know, if you pray hard enough and fast 40 days and do all this stuff, then maybe God will see you that you're worthy. I mean, no, you're not worthy. There's nothing you can do. You know what I mean? It's like, man, stand still and see the salvation of God. You know what? He's going to do it today. That's what I was telling you earlier. God, I said, God, if he, God said, if you be faithful to me, you watch and see what I'm about to do in your life and the rewards I'm about to give you. Yeah. You with me? Them rewards are heavy duty, man. Yeah. More, than, more, than that, more than that check can give you. Yeah. You with me? Right. Which he will accomplish for you today. My goodness. That's heavy duty. For the Egyptians whom you see today... Now he starts prophesying over their life. For the Egyptians and the problems and the big old devils you're seeing right now with your eyes. Yep. Amen. Today, he said, you shall see again no more yes. forever. Yes. I mean, oh God, when he broke the curse, when he broke the power of the devil, he didn't do it just, you know, yep. half ways or a little ways. He done it permanently. Yes. You got to understand what was accomplished through that cross behind me. Come on now. You with me? 
That's heavy duty. I remember a guy telling me a story, uh, or, or, or a story that was said on Golgotha, which was the place of the skull. You ever wondered why it was called the place of the skull? They said that, you know what they said? They said that Adam was buried in that mountain. Adam's grave was in Golgotha, the place of the skull. And when Jesus shed his blood on that cross that dripped down onto the floor, that that blood went into the crevices and cracks of the ground and went down to the very skull of Adam and got a hold of Adam and since the beginning. I mean, he went back and fixed things since the beginning. What the old Adam couldn't do, the new Adam done. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, he broke the curse. He said, from, from now on, by the sweat of your brow, you're going to labor. And he said, every one of you women that have children, you've got a curse on you. And you're going to, in great pain, give birth to a child. I'll tell you what, that curse has been broken. Amen. I've seen people come in and not even sweat a child coming out. Yep. I've seen, you know what I mean? You don't have to be out there busting your back, over there sweating like a dog, you know what I mean, to, to make a lot of money. If you serve the Lord, God will put you in the air conditioning, brother. Amen. God will put you on the inside. Amen. God has always given me favor. Why? Because I serve Him. Amen. Not because I go to church. Because I serve Him, and favor is better than money. Remember that. Amen. God will put you inside there in a cushion job, just managing people. Wow. With air conditioning, turn that air up a couple of degrees, please. Give me some coffee while you're at it. Huh? He'll cause people that work with you to be your servants. Come on now. He's just like that. He broke that curse on, on, on that tree. Amen. I love it though. He said that the Egyptians, you see the day, he said, you shall see no more forever. Amen. Amen. Um, verse 14 says, the Lord, now watch this, the Lord will fight for you. Come on somebody. Amen. You don't have to fight your own battles. He said, the Lord will fight for you. Have you ever had... Uh, 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 somebody like a big brother or or or, 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 or somebody that was a, you hung with that was just a bad dude or a bad chick yeah. and you thought, hey, you mess with me, I'll get Angie after you. Yeah. For those who know my friend Angie yeah. lives on here on 8th and Reedy. You know what I mean? We used to tell all the chicks, they were all trembling for Angie, boy. Yeah. We'd be like, hey, men trembled from Angie. I'd be like, you know what, you know, you better knock it off, I'm going to get Angie out after you. No, 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 don't get Angie, she's crazy. But, but, but when I was young, my brother used to be a black belt karate guy, and he was, everybody knew him for martial arts, and he was tough, and, and kickboxing, and all this stuff, and all these guys had each feared him, and you know what I mean, I was a gangbanger, a thug, I was in trouble, and all this stuff, but whenever I messed with them jocks, or them people, and they started acting up with me, I told them, man, I said, you know what, hey, but you, 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 I'm going to get my brother, no, 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 don't talk, his name's Memo, they call him, his name's Guillermo, but they call him Memo, I said, no, 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 don't tell, don't tell me, Memo. No, don't tell me. Get Memo. Oh, man. Huh? Or, or whatever it was, you know, I'll get Angie. No, 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 don't get Angie. Now the Lord fights my battles. Come on, man. You want me to tell the Lord? You don't want me to pray for you. <laughs> I say, oh Lord, get him, God. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Just stay calm. The Lord will fight for you. Just stay calm. Chill. Chillax. And zip your lip. Sometimes that mouth get hot. I like that translation. What is that? The message says that you just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Zip it, Corky. Put a plug in it. Uh, be like that. Remember that dude on the what was that? Boys in the Hood or whatever the dude in the wheelchair had that oh, yeah. pacifier or what was it on? Something like that. He had a pacifier. Go get you one of those from the dollar store. Put it in. Just 
Shut up. You can mess yourself up sometimes. How many of you talk yourself out of blessings and all? By the time you know it, you're done. You know, I, I, I get you know, Nobody's even there. You're fighting with yourself. <laughs> fighting with the devil and Lord and everybody else. You walk away instead of blessed. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've talked myself out of a few blessings in my life, man. I learned to shut it up. And the Lord, verse 15, And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Amen? Yeah. He was crying. He was, he was praying, but he was crying in fear. He went, oh God, I don't know what I'm going to do. God, you got to help me. These people are going to kill me. They're mad at me. I didn't even do that. It's your fault. And he said, Why are you crying to me? Watch what he tells him to do. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. To get moving. To go forward, not backwards. Yeah. Didn't say moonwalk. <laughs> Just beat it. <laughs> he said go forward. I like that. Adelante, right? Yeah. It means go forward, onward, right? Yeah. Adelante. I remember there was a boxing club down in the Lower East called Adelante Boxing. I like that. That's a Christian's direction. Yeah. Forward. Onward, Christian soldier. Yeah. Marching on to war. Yeah. Amen. Forward. He said, tell the children of Israel to go forward. Or you said what? Get moving? Get moving. Get it. Get moving. Get on it. Amen. He said in verse 16, but lift up your rod. Amen. Lift up your rod. And stretch out your stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. He said, And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground. Man, the God is awesome. Yeah. He's giving them a, like a prophetic word. And the, and the children of Israel shall go on. Shall go across that Red Sea on dry land. Yeah. Dry ground through the mist of the sea. How many know? I told you God, that Moses took him into a box. There's only one way in and one way out, and it's through the way they came in. There's mountains on this side, mountains on this side, the Red Sea. You can't go nowhere there. The viejitas, the viejitos, the children. You got everybody, and you're like, oh my God. And, 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 and well, let me read it because I know it goes there. It says, I indeed will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. And they shall follow, they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his armies, his chariots and his horsemen. And verse 18 says, Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, who, uh, that I am the Lord when I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh his chariots, and his horsemen. And verse 19 says, And the angel of God, somebody say the angel of God. I really believe that the angel of God always represented Jesus Christ. Check it out. Remember, they're in a the box. The enemy's at the mouth of the, of the entrance. Can't go backwards. And God likes you in that position. And the angel of God, uh, who went before the camp, Amen. Of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillars of clouds were uh, went from behind went from before them and stood behind them. I don't know if you understand what he's saying. Remember I said you won't, you came in the mouth of that area. You went in the and you're boxed in. Well, before him was the presence of God. It was a pillar, it was a cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. He's before them, and all of a sudden he moves behind them to protect them. Amen. You with me? It, it's, it's good, watch. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus it was a cloud and darkness. Watch this. Thus it was a cloud and darkness to the to uh, to the one, and it gave light 
by night to the other, so that the, the one did not come near the other all that night. What does yours say right there on that verse? What about the cloud, though? As the darkness fell, the cloud turned to fire, lighting up the right. But the Egyptians and his words did not approach each other in all night. Okay. Oh, man, I just missed it. What verse was I on? 19? 20? All right, there we go. Um, verse 20. So it came between the, the camp of the Egyptians and, and the camp of Israel. Thus it was a cloud and, a, a dark, and darkness to the one, and it gave light by the night to the other, so that the, the one did not come near the other all the night. Verse 21, Then Moses uh, stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back, in other words, to 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 split, if you would, by the by this by a strong east wind all that night. Could you imagine holding your hand out all night, all night long? Just, you with me? That's heavy duty. I don't know how he did that, but as he did, that wind blew that blew that thing in the walls. On each side, watch. Um, verse 22. So the, so the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea. On what? Isn't that what God said? You got to listen to what God said. They went, all, they went through on dry ground. And the waters were a wall. Amen. To them on the, on the right hand and on the left. Have you ever been in the Denver aquarium? aquarium? Yeah. You walk and you look and you I mean at one point you're surrounded by fish and sharks and that's what it looked like. <laughs> you walk through there and be like, wow, check that great white shark out. There's whales, there's fish, mermaids. Barrels been floating. It was walls, man. They were walking through the midst of this thing. Who would have thunk it? Yeah. Huh? Who would have thought that? I thought we were captured. I thought we were in trouble. I thought there was nowhere for us to go. God said, man, I'll split that, I'll split that Red Sea for you. Amen. You with me? Amen. See, the devil don't understand. He doesn't know who your God is. Amen. You with me? He don't understand. He thinks that, you know what I mean? And this is for you today. To show you the power of God and what God can do. He did it here, but he'll do it for you too. Yeah, yeah. Right. And we're in the new covenant now. Yeah. We're even under more blessing and more grace than yeah. these people were. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea. And all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Verse 24, now it came to pass... That in the in the morning, in the morning watch, that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and uh, and cloud, and he and he troubled the army of the Egyptians. Amen. How I many know God will cause trouble to the enemy that messes with you? Come on now. He said, those that bless you, he said, I will bless. And those who curse you, I, the Lord, will curse. Come on now. People don't understand that. They think you're on your own, fighting your own battles. And they're talking about you. They don't realize. You got to tell them just... Shh, shh, don't talk about me. Come on now. Just tell him, but hold your peace. You got something to say? You just It's best that you not say nothing at all. Because God's listening. He's listening to you. You with me? People don't understand what they're doing. You with me? They got to be careful because you're God's property. Verse 25, he said, and he took, he took off, he took off their chariots. Oh, he took off their chariots wheels so that they drove them uh, with, with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, let us, let us flee. 
from the face of the of Israel, for the Lord fight for the Lord for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Amen. Could you imagine that? The Lord took their wheels off. We're talking about the power of God. God can take their wheels off. You with me? God will blind them. God, you with me? Remember in Sodom and Gomorrah? Yeah. Angels went in, God and Lot's family, and the people wanted to, you know what they wanted to do with Lot and, his, yeah. and, and, the, and, the, and the angels, yeah. not the women. They care less about the good looking women, they want the men. And the Bible says that God smote them with blindness. Yeah. They couldn't see. And you with me? And they, and, 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 and they got through them, guys. Here, God took their, their, their quills off. Yeah. Ain't that a trip? You with me? Somebody be pursuing you and they got a flat tire? <laughs> there was a story, I don't know if you youth, if those of you that are in here and went to the youth remember, you, you guys may know Nays Na and Holes. My wife showed a story one time, I don't. I think it was to the youth, Nays, that, that, that there was a woman, that something had happened and the woman had took off from these people that were trying to hurt her. And when they found her in the car, they looked and there was no motor in the car. Oh yeah. yeah. That, that God caused that car to start up and drive off and get her out of trouble. I think it was that, right? Yeah, it was a video. It and and a they video. looked and there was no no motor in the car when they found it. Yeah. Not, a, not an engine in it, but she drove it. Yeah. Talking about the power of God. Uh, you could take your tires off, you could drive it with no engine. Yeah. You with me? I mean, God's a trip. He took their chairs. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm reading the key, New King James, but in my King James, it said something about he had taken their wheels off and they were heavy duty, stro stra or st like stroving or something. It said dragging, but it was heavy duty. It says, I was like, man, that sounds like Pastor Ray right there. I mean, no, the Lord, he said, talks like that. It's heavy duty, bro. <laughs> Verse 26 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, He said, Stretch out your hand over the sea. Didn't he just tell him that earlier? Yeah. The night before, he said, Stretch it out and open it up. Now he said, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the walls may come back upon the Egyptians, or collapse upon the Egyptians, on the, on the chariots and on their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And when the, when the morning uh, appeared, he said, the sea, the sea returned to its full depth with the Egyptians, or when the Egyptians were fleeing into, into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. He says, then the, then the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the armies of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, not so much as one of them remained. Amen. Amen. Talking about the power of God, Amen. not only to bless you, to yeah. help you, yeah. but to destroy the enemy yeah. that yeah. pursues yeah. you. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land, in, uh, in the midst of the sea and the waters were a wall to them on the right hand and on the left amen, amen. he's bragging now <laughs> so the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore amen then Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done. Amen? The Lord had done in Egypt so that, so the people feared the Lord. Now listen to this. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Amen. After all this stuff, they finally believed in God. Amen. And they believed their pastor. Yeah. One of these days you're going to believe me. One of these, I don't know what we got to do. Go to the res or, you know what I mean? I don't know what we, you know what I mean? One of these days you're going to say, man, I think pastor's right. One of these days. 
It said that they feared the Lord. Amen. 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 They feared Him. To fear Him means to reverence God more than anything Amen. else in your life. To hold Him and honor Him higher, higher than anyone else. You with me? Amen. They reverenced him after they seen the power of God that he did. He threw Pharaoh's army into the ocean. Amen. He destroyed them. Amen. You with me? Amen. And and one one person, I remember Brother R. W. Shambok, he said, I heard this person one time say, Moses was this, I don't know what you call him, a guy that knows the the the, the land and, and and studied the land and so he knew it very well. What would you call somebody like that? Huh? So there. Well, not no, you kind of, no, but no. Geo yeah, like Geographic. something like that. Like no, a, no, no, I forget. You know what I'm talking about? He knew the land, studied the, the the the. He knew the water. He knew the depths. He knew when it was low and when it was high, and so he knew all this stuff. And so when he took him there, he knew in his mind at that time the sea would be only two inches deep. <coughs> you with me? Yeah. Yeah. And we know that it's not true because it said that he walked. They walked on. Dry ground, not two inches of water. But the man came back and, 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 and he was telling, you know, uh, uh, he was a Bible, like theologian and saying all this stuff. And Brother R.W. Shambhav heard this and he said, what are you saying? He said, well, Moses took him in there. He knew that there was only two inches of water. So he took him through there on, 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 on what they considered dry ground compared to, you know, hundreds of feet deep of water. So he walked all the people across and, and you know what I mean? So he was trying to, to, to talk down the story of the Red Sea crossing. And, 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 and when he was done, you know, the people were in awe. And R.W. Shamak started clapping and dancing and praising God. And they're like, what are you talking about? Why are you so excited? Because we just shot down your, your theology. We just shot down your miracle. He said, no, it's even a greater miracle than that. He says, how do you figure? He says, God drowned Pharaoh's army in two inches of water. Every chariot and horsemen and all that. He drowned all them dudes in two inches of water. That's a greater story. You with me? Either way, God gets the glory. Yeah. How are you going to get a big old horse and drown him in this much water? Put a man's nose in the water till he sucks in enough that he drowns? Or, you know? You can't, you can't, you know what I mean? The, the word of God is true. God's word is true. God told me, talk on the power of God. You know why? Because it increases your faith. You need to have your, your faith increased. If you're going to believe God for great things, you have to have great faith. You, with, you, you, you remember when, when the disciples had seen miracles and all this stuff come, and then they all got in the boat and they were going across, and Jesus went to sleep? He went to sleep in the midst of the storm? And the, and, and the disciples had just seen miracles, just all this stuff. See, it doesn't matter what you've seen, it matters in your faith. Because Jesus was with them. And he's with you tonight. I said he's with you tonight. He might be sleeping. You with me? He might be relaxing or he might be testing you. You with me? I really don't believe that Jesus was just over there. You know, you know how it is. You know, Malaya does that. You know what I mean? So, just, just, everything, you put it down high. <laughs> she pretends she's sleeping. I think that's what Jesus was doing, just to prove them, to measure. This was a test, a quiz. <coughs> All right, everybody pull out your notebooks and a piece of, you know what I mean, a pen, and we're going to have a pop quiz. Jesus, he's <clears throat> right. One eye looking and saying, what are they going to do? The storm, you know what I mean? Who's going to be sleeping in that thing's and water sloshing in there and everything? And you look, <coughs> Jesus is sleeping. And they got angry and they said, don't you even care about us? We're dying. And Jesus got up and he rebuked the storm. They freaked out. You with me? He said, who is this man within themselves that even the winds and the sea obey him? And he rebuked him. He said, oh, you have little faith. In one translation, it said, you have no faith. You with me? And I mean, several times that happened. Jesus walking on water. You know what I mean? A different time. And they're crying that there's a ghost. 
And she said, hey, chill out, peace is me. They had been striving all night to get to the other side of the lake. And the Bible said Jesus, he had been praying all night. And he walked across the water, and he's watching them. He is watching them. And he, it said he would have passed them by, but they caught a glimpse and said, Ah! La Llorona! Chumacabra! And they were crying, and they were scared. He's like, hey, hey, man up! Soldier up, it's me! Oh, oh Jesus! You with me? And they were afraid. But the Bible says that the moment Jesus stepped into the boat, remember, they had been, they had been rowing all night long, couldn't get to shore. They were stuck in the middle, couldn't go nowhere. Your life might seem like that right now. You with me? And listen, had they not cried out, the Bible says Jesus would have just walked right by them. You with me? They, they, you know, sometimes, man, you know what I mean? We, you know, you're crying, you may get his attention. Yep. He may rebuke you for your lack of faith. Yep. But the moment he came back to him, he stepped into the boat, and they were immediately on, on the other side of the lake. Yep. Just like, how does that happen? It's a miracle. Yep. They, he, as soon as he got in the boat, they were on that side. They were pulling up to shore. You with me? That's what God can do in your life. The power of God is always it's supernatural. It's not natural. Right. You with me? Yeah. How are you going to naturally open a, a, a Red Sea? You with me? Right. Have you ever seen Bruce Almighty? <coughs> that was hard to open the soup up like that. <laughs> Have you seen that? <laughs> He's all like that and the wind is blowing and his tomato soup is just... <laughs> Have you seen it? Yeah. That tomato soup just split, brother. He's working the works of God. <laughs> Try it. I dare you. Yeah. Go home tonight and pour a big tub of water. <laughs> and then just sit there and just like in the name of Jesus, Lord, stretch out your pen or something. <laughs> <laughs> that back scratcher, that back thing, just stretch it out over the water and just close your eyes as hard as you can to me. Put rubber duckies and stuff so they can go to each side. Try it. It ain't gonna happen. You with me? But God is a supernatural God. God fights our battles for us. He said, and the Lord fought for them. The Lord you know what I mean, rebuked Pharaoh. The Lord said, hey, wait a minute, listen. Think you don't understand. See, this battle is not between you and the devil. This battle is between the devil and the Lord. Amen. The devil's not out to just hurt you per se, like you're on his hit list and he hates you so much. He doesn't even know you. He doesn't even like you. But he knows that God lives in you. And he wants to hurt God. You with me? Every time a drug addict overdoses, every time he's, remember that drama we did, Kayla? Or who is it, Corey that did it? Yeah. Remember he shot that and he fell over and stuff? Man, you should have seen the people in the room crying and yeah. some of the mothers that had went through that with their sons. And the devil laughed. Remember the demon? Yeah running around him, saying, yeah, this is what I do. And that's exactly what happens. That's right. You know why the devil don't care about that person on the floor? He looks and sees, did that hurt you? Every time somebody gets shot, you with me? There's a mother that called me today about that. You with me? I think they're going to ask me to do that funeral. But I heard it in her voice. I know her. But I heard it in her voice, just the brokenness. She says, give me a call back. And I, I heard that. See, the devil, he's not, he, he doesn't care that a young man died. Right. He's looking up. Did it hurt you? How many know if you have children here today yeah. and you see them hurt? You with me? That, it, that, that, that you see them sick, you see them break an arm. You're, you went one time Alexis, when my son was in the hospital, like them heavy doors in the hospitals, crushed her finger. Remember, Joe? Yeah. Crushed her fingers, huh? They were hanging off. I'm telling you what, man, this preacher didn't know what to do. You with me? I didn't even know to call on the name of Jesus. I was just like, 
in, in, in terror for my granddaughter. We didn't know what to do. She's bleeding, her fingers are hanging off her hand. And it was like, oh my God, get her to the ER. I couldn't say nothing. Thank God Amber or Gerald or somebody grabbed her and took her. I'm like, I didn't know what to do. Thank God for prayer. Amen. Thank God that we pray in advance. Amen. Come on now. Because you never know what's coming up. See, you don't think you're coming to pray on Friday night. You don't know what's about to happen Wednesday. Yeah, right. Or Tuesday or sa a Saturday. You don't know, but you're praying. Say, oh God, Lord, your, your will be done. Yeah. You with me? Because yeah. there's times you may be hit so hard you don't know, you don't have words to say. That's right. You don't even feel, you can't even think of what to pray. Yeah. You with me? Right. But I've been praying. Yeah. I've been putting in, you with me? Putting in my account of faith. Man. You with me? That service that you needed, that prayer meeting that you needed, that Bible study that you read on, and, and you don't realize, you're, you're, you know what I mean? It's about to happen. You're about to go through stuff, but you've prepared yourself. Uh. You with me? He's a supernatural God who does supernatural things that will blow your mind. That's right. He's Man. a powerful Man. God, right. and he, can, he's, he cares about you. That's right. He said, man, I'm going to destroy Pharaoh. I'm going to drown every one of his army men for you. Amen. And I'm telling you what, that devil don't know who he's messing with. Amen. That devil's in a lot of trouble. And every one of these demons, every one of these evil spirits, they're in trouble. Yep. Especially if they're messing with you. Yeah. You've got to understand that. If you don't know that, you're going to not know how to pray. Right. You with me? Amen? you got to understand the power of God is on your side. Amen. If God is for us, who can be against us? Right, if he spared not even his own son, but delivered him up for us, how much more, you know what I mean, will he do for us? How much more will he bless us? Amen. You with me? Jesus went through a heavy duty betrayal and treatment and, and death, suffering, but he did it for you. Understand that. I don't you know some of you may feel like, well, I have to suffer for what I've done. No. I've dealt with that even with my own father, feeling like maybe this is God's punishment. I said, No, Dad, God doesn't God, God wants to He forgives you. He's not here to punish you. Right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. He's yeah. not here to punish you. And I know some of you feel like that. Yeah. You with me? Some of you feel like, man, well, I deserve this, or, 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 you know what I mean, I've done something so bad that God can't forgive, or something like that. Listen, he, he paid the penalty on this cross. The power of God, you know, not only raised him from the dead, but killed him for you. So you don't have to die. So you don't have to go to hell. So you don't have to suffer. By his stripes you are healed. The power of God. Amen. To deliver you. I mean, I got a bunch of stuff here. I, just, I, I put a bunch of stuff down and I thought, oh no, I'm not going to get through Moses tonight. You with me? Because God done so many mighty miracles. I mean, I'm, I got Elijah on the list. I got Elisha on the list. I got Daniel on the list. Amen. Come on now. Amen. These are just some of the, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Some of the Old Testament prophets. Amen. Wait till I get into the New Testament about the power of God. Amen. About what God can do for your life, that he's on your side. God wants you healed. He wants your babies blessed. Come on now. You with me? You got to understand, I'm, I'm under that covering. You with me? If God did it for them, God will do it for me. If he opened a Red Sea, then he'll open a, well, you know, whatever it is that I'm going through, he'll do that for me. All I got to do is what? Stand and what else? The only thing you got to do is quote the word. Amen. Your word says, Lord. Amen. Your word says. And anything other than that, shut it up. Yeah. Shut Amen. that thing up. Don't think it. Don't say it. Even if you think it, rebuke it, cast it down. So you know what? I'm not going to say it. Amen. God's on my side. Right. If you can believe that, if you can get that in your spirit, I mean, man, you're, 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 there's nothing that can stop Amen. you. Amen. But you've right. got to believe that. You've got to understand that the power of God, all that power that God possesses lives in me. Amen. And is on my side and is for me. That's right. 
And there's nothing God won't do for me. He said, ask and it will be given. Seek, you will find. Knock, the door will be opened. Come on now. He didn't say, well, you, you know, you just... You know, if you ask, you know, I might do something for you. <laughs> he said, if you seek, you know what I mean, man, you know, it may take you 30 years, but you may, you might, might find it one day. If you knock, you know, and I feel generous, then maybe I will, after, you know what I mean, you've suffered and stuff, that I, I'll open up and kind of give you a break. You know, he's not like that. If you understand that he's on your side today. That the power of God that created the heavens and the earth, the universe, the yes. Milky Way, right. right. did all that. That He that He loves you and He is on your side. Awesome. You with me? Yes. See, you won't lack faith. Yep. You won't be like, don't you care what I'm going through? Yep. You'll be like, Father, thank you that I have somewhere to come. Yes. God, you care That's for right. me. Yes. You said, cast all my cares on you, but you care for me. Yes. There's nothing I can't do. I can do all these in Christ who strengthens me. If you understand the power of God tonight, I mean, you're, you're going to be happy. You're not going to be discouraged, depressed, downcast, oh my soul. He said, put your hope in God. Lift, your, lift up your countenance, he said. You with me? Why? Because listen, I can't do nothing in myself, but I know who can. I know who can. The power of God. That's right. God wanted me to remind you of that today. Amen. Can you give the Lord a hand of praise? Why don't you stand with me tonight? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you tonight, God.